Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. Sorry we got started a little bit late. Um, uh, I think we're a little bit late, but anyway, good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is Relationship Wednesday. Um, so excited to see all you guys out. Let me give some shout outs real quick and we'll get going to Tifa. Good morning. Keita, good morning. Yalitza, good morning. Terry, good morning to you. Cynthia, good morning. Amanda, good morning. Uh, Tay, good morning. Uh, Tarsheela, good morning. Shanika, good morning. Diane from Houston. I think she's in Houston now. Good morning. Uh, Miss Donzi, good morning. Lakeisha, good morning. Uh, Pastor Bazir, good morning. Jerry, Jerry, good morning to you. Joan, good morning. God bless you. Uh, Madeline, good morning. God bless you. Harry, good morning to you, sir. God bless you. Brenda, good morning. God bless you. Uh, Natasha, good morning. God bless you. Alma, good morning. Cousin Faye, good morning. Crystal, good morning. Uh, Jennifer, good morning. Pastor Ron, good morning. Candace, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let's get going, man. We're like I said, we're a little late, so let's get right in the word. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this another great day that you have made. Uh, we thank you, Father, that we choose to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Thank you, Father, for our winning in the word audience. Thank you for everybody that is participating, that's continuing to come and feed their faith and starve their doubt to death. Thank you, Father, for them, Lord. I speak blessings and I speak peace over their lives right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good morning. So today is Relationship Wednesday. And last week um, on Relationship Wednesday, we talked um, about two things. Uh, we talked about creating healthier patterns uh, with our friends uh, and seeing that we finished with seeing the best in people, seeing the best in people, um, trying to look at the positive aspects of others, uh, especially when you're dealing with family. You know, um, a lot of times when we talk about seeing the best of people with some friends, um, sometimes your friends are difficult. Sometimes we need to find other friends. Um, sometimes we need to stay and be a friend. Uh, and, and, and sometimes we, we need to just work with those friends, but, but especially when it comes to family, uh, we need to think about, um, how we find the positive sides of, of what's going on with family. Uh, because family, we can't get rid of. Family, we can't let go. You know, family is going to be there with us, right? So today, what I want to talk about um, on Relationship Wednesday is that we need to remember um, who we're dealing with. I think a lot of times in relationships and in friendships, uh, sometimes uh, seeing the best in people is always important. I know that, you know, because we're Christians and the nature of who we are and the nature of what we believe and Christianity, we always want to see the best. However, um, we can't pretend that, that others' negative traits don't exist. We cannot pretend that others' negative traits don't exist. So you got to be careful uh, when it comes to certain people. If you know that you, you're dealing with a friend that, for instance, gossips a lot to you about other people, uh, you got to, you know, you got to be cautious of sharing your um, secrets with that person, sharing your intimate, you know, uh, things that are going on in your life with that person, because you know them to be a gossip, right? Uh, if you have a friend that, for instance, you've seen repeatedly in your friendship with them, they are backstabbing or backbiting somebody else, right? The, the Bible says, you know, God is not mocked. Uh, you know, whatsoever a man shall sh so is so shall he reap it. I mean, understand that sometimes people are really showing you things for you to understand who they are. And sometimes, especially as Christians, you know, we want to we want to we want to hide things. We want to act like things don't exist. We want to we want to make believe like this person doesn't have or don't have these issues, but they do. So you got to, when you're conducting that friendship, you got to remember who it is that you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? It's like Pastor Nick, if you're my friend and you happen to be, you know, like another football team, you better remember on Sunday, I'm coming for you because I'm a Bucks fan, right? And it might not be too pleasant, right? See, so there's a great example. You got to know who you're dealing with. I find that a lot of times Christians allow themselves um, – to be doormats or to get walked over because they're not strong in the Lord. 
You know, the Bible tells us in Joshua chapter one, in verse nine, he says, have I not commanded you? He's literally asking a question here, Joshua. Then God goes on to tell him, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So whatever of these friendships that you have, whatever relationships that you have, know that God and your relationship with God is more important than any earthly relationship. You know, I hear people, here, here's a funny thing I hear Christians say. You know, since I've been a Christian, life is boring because I can't hang out with my friends and I, I don't have anybody to talk to. Let me ask you a question. Do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you know God? A big part of my life transformation was me disconnecting from everything in my past and allowing my, it was almost like a fighter stopping fighting because he's been banged up for a long time. And he's had lots of little injuries and he just decides to take a year off and allow his body to heal before it can then grow to be greater than it was. Sometimes it's like that for us in the spirit. Sometimes we got it. We got it. We got to separate ourselves from people so that we can be built up and we can learn to get to know God. Sometimes it's good to be in the wilderness. Matter of fact, in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse seven, it says, but blessed is the one who Trust in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Again, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence is in him. Talking about God. So sometimes that 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 quietness you you feel, that alone that you feel, sometimes it's a good thing. You know, sometimes people experience this when they grow up around their family and they live around their family their whole life. They live around their parents. They live around their uncles or aunts. And finally, they move away from home. Man, it becomes very liberating to a degree because you're not, yeah, you miss them, but man, there's a lot of isms and schisms that you're not having to deal with no more, not being right there around family. It's kind of hard to do that today with Facebook and phones and all that to really get away. But you get what I'm saying. Sometimes when you go away on a trip and you're away from your, your, your current environment and your current situation for a period of time, it can, be very, it can be a very good experience. It's the same with God. Some of us are so busy and we're going so much that we don't ever really get that, that alone time. And, and that, does, that causes us not to really see our friendships the way we should see them. Are we remembering who we're dealing with, right? And then today, the last thing I want to talk about for today is letting go or get space if you need it. Um, no one is time to distance yourself from a friend. Um, if the other person uh, can't be around you without antagonizing you, without uh, minimizing what you're trying to, or God's trying to maximize in your life, if you feel that the other person is constantly um, being abusive towards you, sometimes it's time to just separate or take a break from that friendship for a season. Sometimes it, it, it really is. In Psalms 27 and 3, it says, Though the army, though an army besiege me, this is David talking, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me, even then will I be confident. Don't be afraid to allow some friendships, some space, some air, some time. That even goes for church. Maybe there's some people in church that, you know, you, you've gotten close to over the years. And they, they're your friends. It doesn't mean you have to stop being their friend. But sometimes you need to put a little space in between the friendship to really see if it was a real friendship because real friends don't just stop communicating and stop being around each other and cut each other off totally.
but maybe you were, you know, maybe you were over each other's house every night for a season. Maybe it's time to just cut that back to once a week, maybe once every two weeks, maybe once a month. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what your personal situation is, but we got, I do know that we got to know when people are, you know, if you find yourself driving home from your friends with your wife or your husband and y'all are talking about them, if you find that, let, let me tell you a good way. It's a good way for you to know it's time to take a break from a friendship. If you and your wife are talking more about your friends and their problems, it's time to take a break. If you and your wife are talking more about your friends and their problems, then the time y'all spend together, the time y'all are encouraging each other, the time y'all talk about your goals, your vision, where you're going, it's time to take a break. I mean, even me and my wife, sometimes as pastors, you know, we have to say, you know, we're, we, we, you know, we're not going to talk about the church and people in the church that are having issues or going through things all day and all night. We're not going to do that. We're, we're not. Why? Because man, that gets sucked the life out of you, man. You know, and you got to remember, you got to be filled as much as you're releasing. See, that's a place that a lot of Christians, because they don't understand ministry, don't understand it. If you're going to church or you're watching one in the word for 15 minutes a day to be encouraged and to be built up, but yet the life is being sucked out of you by two or three friends for four or five hours a day, where do you think you're ultimately going to end up? You're ultimately going to end up depressed. You're ultimately going to end up angry. You're ultimately going to end up hurt. Why? Because you're pouring out more than you're receiving. You're pouring out more than you, you're receiving. You can only pour out to the degree that you receive. You can only pour out to the degree that the word is in you. Amen. So remember, I, I love you, man. And, and remember what we said about today. Number one, remember who you're dealing with. So when you're dealing with people, know who they are. Don't expect people to be more than what they are. Allow them time to develop. Allow them time to transform. Allow them time to, to, to go through what they need to go through to become a better them. If what they are and what they do affects you that much, distance yourself from them. That was number two. Let go sometimes. Create some space. Don't ruin the relationship. Maybe sometimes you step back and you just pray for them. Maybe you just pray for them. Amen? So, um, I'm excited, man. Tomorrow's prayer Thursday. We already got a lot of prayer requests. Um, I want to ask you today, man, we got a homegoing celebration uh, for baby Gianni, uh, for the Camacho family. Just be praying for the family. Uh, pray God's peace be with them. Also, I want to tell you that on Friday, don't forget this, on Friday, this Friday, 7 o'clock, we are doing a live Heart of the Matter. We are going to be doing an interactive Heart of the Matter and we're going to be talking about our pet peeves. And what does your pet peeve say about you? So what do I mean by that? For instance, my pet peeve is people sitting in a public place. This might be one of y'all. So you'll know, because pastor, I throw daggers at people, man, when they're doing this. They sit in a public place with their cell phone on, and they got it on speaker, and they're sitting in a restaurant having a full-blown conversation on speakerphone. That's a pet peeve of mine. That bothers me. The question we're going to explore on Friday is, what does that say about me? I know that bothers me, but what does that say about me? So, man, you're going to get a chance to talk about your pet peeves. You're going to get to say what they are. We're going to talk about them. It's going to be a great time. Heart of the Matter, this Friday night, 7 o'clock, live p.m. Amen. Until tomorrow morning, Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life.